listening to our um, our next episode of our of our vlog series. Um, I'm very excited to have the wonderful Helen, who's our, our Woven's founder. Um, she's got tons of things um, to talk about today. And actually, you know, we're going to get a bit personal and, and hear, you know, about the challenges, the successes, the learnings, and frankly, the pure mental determination, I think, that's, that's driven you um, throughout your career. And I, and I think there's a lot that people can learn and be motivated by. Um, so I'm as excited as a listener as I am in my sort of position. So by, by way of introduction, if you don't know who we are, I'm Sai, I'm the Chief Growth Officer um, at Woven. And as I've already said, but I'll let Helen introduce herself. Hey everybody, um, I'm Helen. I'm um, founder and director of Woven. Brilliant. And like I said, what we're wanting today, and, and we've spoken about this sort of prior um, to, to doing this, is really looking at, you know, what makes you tick? I think I said, what makes you growl? Um, you know, what, what inspires you and, and, and how do you, how do you su sustain, you know, the level of energy and motivation that, that you've, you've clearly got? Um, so again, I'm excited. So when you travel, and I was very fortunate to, to travel for a year around the world with my lovely partner, um, they always say it, it's the people that make a place. And, you know, and I think the same is very much true about the workplace. And, you know, when I was um, going through sort of um, looking at where to work um, back in, well, back last, this probably this time last year, actually, yeah. you know, I was looking into you and woven and, and who you were and i came across a really like intriguing podcast that you were on um that sort of talked about your story uh, a bit more and it'd be really great to hear about your story and sort of from from the start if that's okay yeah of course um i mean like you said this this is quite personal so some of this is is a little difficult to talk about um but i'm going to start like from being quite young because i think that's um been fundamental in in where I've got to today yeah. um, so from being quite young um, I've always had this sense of not fitting in and that was that was amplified um, when I was diagnosed with dyslexia um, and I genuinely struggled with that for quite a few years um, I didn't follow the rules I enjoyed arguing with my teachers probably more than they enjoyed it um, I was I was a little less normal um, but I grew to love my dyslexia and all that it gives me. Um, as a young adult, I didn't really have a sense of what I wanted to do for a career. I studied desktop publishing, arts, management, science, and once I left education, I travelled like you did. Um, I temped for a while until I found like a work home that excited me, and that was that was BT. So working in the technology innovation team with those guys, um, we trialed new tech, we pushed boundaries, and it was really solid fun for about four years. Um, but I, I longed for a new challenge, and so I moved to run a marketing team, which was probably my first experience of agency life. And that looked fun. So about a year or so later, I moved again, and that was um, agency side. I suppose... I've never feared change. I know some people find it really stressful, but I genuinely find it exciting. I'd probably go so far as to say I crave change um, and all of the challenges that come with something new. So when, when I couldn't find a work home to fulfill that, that desire for, for progression and, and pushing boundaries, I decided to set up on my own. Yeah. And that was, um, that was 18 years ago. Um, I didn't have a plan. I just knew I wanted to like control my own de destiny. And I specifically love Ray Dalio's um, quote, which says, um, sincerely believe that you might not know the best possible path and recognize that your ability to deal well with not knowing is more important than whatever it is you do know. Um, and that's kind of, that's, kind of how I, how I live really, how you know, I'm incredibly determined, um, rather competitive. No, um, no, you're not as competitive as me. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Um, 
I always have been though. Um, and I think that roller coaster of a journey, I'm still enjoying it. Like from those early days of setting up the business through to now, it has been a ride. Um, just when you think something's working incredibly well, a bump appears. Um, and I think it's the belief that anything is possible, no matter the odds. We can do it, we can make it more exciting, we can solve challenges, we can grow. It's never really about what happens along the way, it's, it's more about how we respond to what happens. And, and how, you know, talk us through like, so you made the choice to start up the agency, yeah. like how did you do that? You know, and, and, and what were the challenges and what was going through your mind right at that moment in time where you'd been working for the man and now you're, now you're not, you're working for yourself. Like that must be incredibly exciting and, and horrifying, I guess, at the same time. Um, I mean, I was 26, um, which I think it's, it's a brilliant age because you, I didn't realise my mortality at that age. You don't really have as many fears or worries or financial commitments as you do is when you're getting older. It was, it was a challenge. It was something new. It was something to try. And look, if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. It's not... It's not a failure. I think the failure is if you don't give it a try. Yeah, no, exactly. So, so Inc. Digital was create, founded 18 years ago, is it? Yeah. yeah, 2002. So, so talk us through that sort of those initial years. And obviously, we're no longer Inc. We're now we're now woven. So, why why Inc. and why woven? And and what's the you know what's the journey been like? going from ink to woven and what's the difference between those two things? It's, it's adaption or evolution. Um, yeah. so from, from ink, um, the marketplace was very different back then to what it is now. Um, and digital was definitely um, emerging. Um, it wasn't as founded as it is um, currently. So, I fulfilled a, a role. I was a freelancer. Ink was um, simply uh, an umbrella for a freelancer um, to go out and pretend to be a little bit bigger um, as a business than I was just me in my spare bedroom at that time. Um, so the the change from Ink to Woven has been um, it's been massive, and but it is simply adaption or evolution to the market, to the needs of the clients, to the clients themselves. Um, the principles through that evolution have been pretty much the same. So the principles of marketing, it was a very different world. We had um, a lot less opportunities than we do now, but we all know any business that doesn't change or adapt struggles and potentially ultimately dies. That's not in my nature, Si. It just mm -hmm. isn't. Um, one, of the thing, one of the main things I'm truly precious about um, in my work is being the best that we can be for our, for our team, for our fantastic clients. And to live by that sentiment, we have to regularly adapt. It might not always feel graceful when we do, but there's normally a really good reason behind it. Um, yeah. And I, and, I, and I think my my sort of impression on, on everything, and, and again, what's attracted me um, to Woven is the fact that I know that it might sound cliche, and I get that, to want to be sat at the table with the client and be have a, a strategic partnership. But, you know, frankly, the, the tenure of some of our biggest clients is, is within the, the years, right? It's six, seven, eight years. And I think in any relationship, and regardless of it being strategic or not, just a personal relationship, it's about honesty, it's about integrity, and it's about you know, clients paying us to not be yes people, but to actually have those difficult conversations and say, you know what, that's rubbish. And <laughs> we think this, and this might be a better way of doing it. And if it were our money, we really care about what happens with that money. And this is where we would place our money. Um, and I think that's for me as well, where, like you say, we've evolved and adapted and sort of found, found that place of which where we feel we give most value um yeah. and and everything that we did at ink still exists right it's just this higher level of of that strategic partnership which is being sat at the, the sort of the the c-suite table the director table um would that be fair to say it is very much so yeah 100 percent um 
so what what are the things you you know you've got you've had a really good career you're not, you're not over yet you know <laughs> uh, you've achieved a lot you know what what are the things that you would say you're you're most proud of in that time oh do you know what this is um i could i could talk about a lot of things um that i'm really proud of um i suppose Okay, um, from winning our first massive contract with the, the amazing gang that once was LA Fitness, so Mark Jenkins, Claire Rowland, Jane Powdrell, Jen Julian, the team were great. Um, what a massive coup for two people in the team to win um, the digital estate for LA Fitness and to take what was a very traditional agency, uh, sorry, a very traditional industry model and turn it into um, an opportunity to buy a membership online, which you couldn't do um, before before we started working with LA. Yeah. The work there was was both challenging and really exciting. And, and the things that we managed to achieve opened up a number of equally exciting doors. So that's that was one incredibly um, proud time. Um, then there's moving into a proper office. Um, celebrating a team member's fifth year anniversary, opening a second office, working with some of the most amazing and genuinely lovely clients. Like I've got to say, Princess Yachts, Gil, Haynes. Um, but ultimately, there's the work that we're producing as a team um, to help support and grow clients. That leads to amazing awards. So. There's been absolutely stacks of of really memorable, positive, proud moments. Yeah, and I, and I think also, you know, I, when you've brought people into the business and they might have been at the sort of the start end of their career, yeah. um, you know, and then I know, you know, like Katie, our brilliant creative director, she, she was with Inc. for a few years and was brilliant and then she went away to develop her career and, She's, she now, come back. she's come back so that says that says a lot right that's good um but also you know she it it must be incredibly a, a proud feeling to know that you've you've nurtured that and they've gone away and they've come back and and they're even better now and you sort of you've helped nurture that sort of that skill set and, and that expertise that must be a great feeling it is genuinely um i mean You've mentioned, Katie, there's been, there's been a few team members that yeah. over the years I would welcome back wholeheartedly. Um, another one is um, an account manager, or she was then, she's, she's flying high in New Zealand at the moment, um, Steph. She was amazing. Um, we've been really fortunate to hire some fantastic talent in the business. Some of it is currently with us. Um, some of it has come back and some of it, some people have left, you know, and that's fine. And we, um, we support everybody, whether they're, whether they're with us now or, or not. And I suppose to flip the, the question, you know, with every positive side of things, it can be a bit bumpy at times. And no doubt in 18 years, there's, there's been a couple of bumps, you know, what, what, what's been, you know, your, the biggest challenges that you've had and I guess more importantly like how did you solve them and what what did you learn from those challenges um I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on on one challenge um and it was the year 2018 so let me let me start in 2017 and I'll build up to why it was a challenge yeah, sure. uh, 2017 in November, um, we changed our brand, we repossessioned ourselves and we redefined our offering. That was all super positive and a really great next step forward um, for, for our business evolution. However, we didn't manage that transition very well. We tried to keep the balance of the old ink way of doing things and the new woven way forward. It didn't work. Um, we didn't succeed in moving forward. And we actually learned a few lessons from that time. I think Mark refers to it as the time when Inc. was wearing a new dress. Oh. Um, our communication to the team and clients, it was confusing. Yeah. Um, and we struggled with new business during that time as well. But once we identified 
what our issue was and we took the plunge and we moved forward 100% committed to Woven and all of the positivities that came with that, we saw success. So I think um, the learning for me is it's a balance. Sometimes you may act too quickly, sometimes you may not act quickly enough, but I think as long as we reflect back and continually learn from those events, you can make better decisions going forward. You're not going to get it right all of the time. And, and like I think it is, it's about, it's about admitting and understanding failure, isn't it? And I, I think, of, I, I mean, I say it all the time, but you, you only, failure is only when you do the same thing twice. <laughs> and you, well, you fail at the same thing twice, right? And I think the culture, from a cultural perspective, I think, you know, we talk about radical transparency and, and honesty. And, and actually, if there is an error or a mistake, it's about, like you say, calling it out and going, look, we're a team. How can we resolve this? And it sounds like that's a really good, case study that you mentioned there around that um next question is i uh, the said podcast that i will put it in the in the notes on on the page when we post this but it really was great and and it you talked or you were asked the question around you know you're a uh, a leader within the industry you're female you know has has that being a female in this industry you know has it affected you in a positive way or in a negative way or have there been more barriers or less barriers because of that and you you answered it really well there but it would be great if you could bring that into into this conversation a little bit and share what your thoughts are on that i think um on reflection yes there have been instances throughout my career where being female has not gone in my favor um I'm not going to call anybody out. I'm not, I'm not that type of person, but it's only on reflection. Like while, while I was employed at certain, at, in certain businesses, I don't think I ever really noticed it at the time. Mm. What I would say is this is a huge topic. Um, diversity is yeah. An, an issue in our industry um, and it's something that I feel incredibly empowered to try and improve even if it's just a teeny tiny bit um, and it's not just about being female like um, gender's an issue but so is race um, it's so is sex it's just we need to get we need as an industry we need to be better um, so that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm um, a member of the uh, All In Leeds community and diversity is one of my, one of my pillars um, to try and improve. But I think, in all honesty, I think that's a, a much bigger conversation. And what I would really like to do is I'd like to open it up. Um, I'd like to um, have a forum where people can share their stories and we can learn from them and we can make improvements off the back of it yeah brilliant brilliant and um you know aside from your your very lovely boy gina what what gets you up in the morning you know still like what 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 motivates you still i love what i do si um if i didn't i wouldn't <laughs> do it <laughs> um i mean there's there's been long hours financial sacrifices personal sacrifices uh, literally blood, sweat, and a few tears. Um, but I absolutely, genuinely, hand on heart, love what I do. Um, I'm older, a little wiser, um, so now I'm really focusing on working smarter, so not longer or harder, but achieving what I need to achieve and still having plenty of energy and time for my family. And I am super close to, to my parents, um, and my husband and son, as you know, mean the absolute world to me. Um, they all ground me and give me that reality check when one is very much needed. Um, and they make me laugh. I think yeah. without getting too deep, you only get one round at life. Yeah, yeah. It has to be filled with the stuff that you really enjoy. Um, but what I would say is probably about six years ago, that work-life balance, it was massively out of whack. Yeah. I had very little life. Um, I made a conscious decision to make some changes and thankfully they've paid off. So over the following years, um, we brought in a new business partner, Mark. Um, which was a hugely positive turning point for me. And thankfully, excuse me, <coughs> with the other changes and compromises over time, I now have that balance that I wanted. 
Yeah. So yeah. I, I spend time doing the work that I love and I'm good at. But I have time to teach Gina you know how to play piano. So it's, I'm in a really good place. I think that's really, really sound advice. And I, as a sort of an antidote to that, I suppose that I am um, in a different role. I was was putting together um, a team's like um, we called it a soap a strategy on a page. And essentially within that, there were sort of guiding principles or like strategic uh, pillars, if you like, to use the phrase that we used. And it was all a bit serious, right? I was a bit serious in it. And I remember sort of going through it with, um, with a guy I really respected, he's a very strategic chap called Richard. And uh, we, were, we were talking through it. And then um, he said, uh, there's, there's one more, I think, that you should add to this. And I was like, oh, no, there's not. And he, and he said, it's eat cake. And, and you know what, it, 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 it might not, I don't know how profound it will sound on here, but, but at the time where I was in the middle of like, you know, I had a big team, I had big, big targets. We were talking millions, you know, of, of pounds at that time. And it was stressful and it was stressful for me. It was pressurized for me. It was pressurized for my team. And I'd done this really serious thing, but you know what, the one thing I'd forgotten, which actually is probably one of my biggest strengths on paper, I, I'd forgotten people. I'd actually forgotten the people and the human element of it. And I was a bit like, whoa, this is, this was like an uppercut to me, you know, this is, and, and it was so profound, the like, serious, 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 but eat cake, you know? <laughs> and, it, and I really, it, it, it's always stayed with me that, and it was a really good like life lesson. So I think that's what you're saying. We all need to eat a bit more cake, right? And spend time, have a cuppa, spend time with our family and not, not be busy fools, right? You know. And um, it's, it's gotta be fun. It has to exactly. be fun. If it's not fun, why the hell are you doing it? We, we only get one chance, right? So I, I agree. So for, for any, you know, aspiring entrepreneur that's listening to this or, or an entrepreneur that's, that's you know, older and, and still aspiring which is absolutely fine you know what what in summary what advice would you give them i think that's a really tough one because we're we're all very different and we're all on very different journeys but i think there's there's three things um i would say firstly believe in yourself yeah secondly not too much surround yourself with people who truly want to help you get where you want to be but that aren't afraid to challenge your train of thought so you can have meaningful positive debates to reach the best outcome and then the third piece of advice would be remember that the best decision is often the one that is least wrong it's very rare that it will be 100 percent right yeah that's that's really good advice and and finally 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 final question you know what what are you most excited about for woven um just progression positive progression um for the team for the fantastic clients you never know what's around the corner i mean we're in a global pandemic who saw that coming i didn't um i was sat in the office not try, trying not to be blase about it when mark saying we should probably like be packing up and going home i'm like oh it probably won't be that bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i think um out of every difficulty or challenge there is always an opportunity to be better and to do better um so that is what i'm most excited about is the possibility Brilliant. Well, look, that's, um, thanks so much. I thought that was really, really interesting and I hope everyone else found it interesting. Um, thanks, Helen. Thanks, Si. <laughs> See you later.